Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this Krupp's coffee and spice grinder. So, you're supposed to press down this button, a blade spins round, and it's supposed to turn your beans into grind here. But it's just humming, apparently. So, had a quick look in here and it all looks brand new. So, again, I think this is something which has become faulty either on the first use or from manufacturer to the retailer, or from the retailer to the customer. Everything looks new. All right now, let's uh, plug it in and see what it's going to do. Listen. So again, a completely accurate description on eBay. Uh, I bought this for, I think it was six or seven pound, plus a couple of pound postage. I'll flash it up on the screen. There we go. So you can see it's not spinning. Right, let's unplug it. So it's gonna be safe to work on. Now, oh actually, do you know what? There is a little bit of evidence of use in here. So I had a quick look on YouTube and there is actually a teardown video. Oh, it's spices rather than coffee. Yeah, I can smell that. Oh, it's strong. And basically, a lot of the time, well, it's a nightmare to get into, but a lot of the description uh, in the comment section basically said that uh, it was rusted up where the motor meets this thing here. So I'm wondering whether it just needs to be freed up. Apparently also there's, oh, here we go, look. They were saying under the label that there's a little thing here, but you can see there's a little little slot here that you can put a screwdriver into. Let me zoom in, because you can, you can actually see the end of the motor. I just want to see, is it turning? No, it's not. So when I turn the blade here, this isn't turning here. Look, we might be able to just free it up. Can you see in here, there's a little slot? So let's get a tiny little screwdriver and see if we can turn that. Once we get it turning, it might then just free itself up. Is this even going to be able to get in there or is it too big? It's not going to focus, is it? Oh, that's too big. Let's use something smaller. Let's see if this will do. Now that is jammed. Wow. Okay, I'm going to try to use a bigger bit. So yes, like made for coffee beans, spices, and uh, seeds, stuff like that. Wow, that really is rock solid. Why? Now I'm not going to be able to turn that. No, that is. I thought I'd be able to free that up, but no, that is not turning whatsoever. Just in case, one second now. I'm just wondering why, why there's no resistance here. In fact, it's coming off. Yeah, it's coming off, you see. Is that just pressure fit down or is that supposed to be screwed in? I think there's a little thread at the very end here. So, that is not going to turn, is it? Let's plug it in one more time. No. So maybe it just had a couple of uses and maybe what they did is put water down here and it seized up. I'm just thinking, instead of taking it all apart, which is gonna be very destructive, I wonder if there was a way that I could just put oil down here. Mind you, if it's rusted up, then uh, if it's rusted up, it's probably gonna to need to be taken apart and cleaned. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's take it apart and clean. There's, there's, there's loads of clips in here. Let me just work out how these things work. Right, okay, there is clips in here, but they're a bit hard to uh, work with. So the video just suggested putting heat on each corner. So let's do that. Right, I've got my hot air station set to 200 degrees Celsius. Let's add a little bit of heat around here.
Wow, watch that bit again. I've slowed this down 100 times and you still can only just barely see the blur going across the screen, which is happening right now. That is coming out like a bullet from a gun. That is a clip that ended up flying out of it. Right, well that one flew across the room there, but if you add heat, it does, uh, it does seem to take them off without breaking them. So let's make sure I add enough heat to these other two remaining ones. <laughs> Clips, oh, it's so annoying. Lovely to put together, a nightmare to take apart. So I managed to undo one and then the other one just springed across the room because I didn't add enough heat to it. So I'm adding heat to these two now. Let's see what it ends up coming out like. Right, okay, I wouldn't say that was overly successful. So one broke off completely and this one looks like it's, uh, <laughs> it's just hanging on by one. Uh, these two look all mangled, so yeah, that's that wasn't successful whatsoever, which is a, a real shame. Anyway, so, it comes into here, we have one of those little capacitor to stop noise going back down the line. This is the actual on and off switch here, we know that's working. So basically this thing comes all the way down from up here to press that, uh, to press that button. There. And it just goes to a motor and the motor's on a blade. So it should be quite straightforward. So now, let's see if we can turn this now to free it up. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I can already feel it was hard to begin with and then it just loosened up. I already know that that is now gonna be working. Let's see if it's turning here. It's a shame, so they have designed it like that, but because the hole's so small, it's hard to actually get into. But I wish I'd persevered a bit more now because this thing was immaculate and now you see the bottom's broken. Be fine for use by me, but I wouldn't be able to uh, do anything with it. Wouldn't be able to set it on, you know? I know that's gonna work now. Right, okay, so, is there a way of getting this back together without causing a whole load of mess? Obviously you have to put the switch this side where the uh, thing comes down from the switch. It's a shame some screws weren't used, and then you see it could have been taken apart without any uh, without any hassle. Right. Well, let's see if it's working, and then we'll worry about what we're going to do on the bottom. Let's see if it's still doing that hum. Here we go. Oh, that's really freed up. So maybe upon first use, they used a bit of water and it might have just had a little bit of surface rust. So yeah, if I put this back on now, it is going to be, uh, I'm sure it's gonna be working just fine. But what are we gonna do about the bottom? That's so irritating, you see, the way that that's been designed. I think rather than super glue, because I've got a feeling that this is gonna be a common thing that's gonna to happen to it. I think rather than super glue, because it means this will never come off again, I'm gonna use hot glue all the way around here and then put it there because there's not really gonna be much heat building up here. The heat, I presume, will be more around this area where it's spinning. I think this will remain relatively cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll do that. It's, it's far from ideal, but what can I do? So I've got my glue stick here and I'm heating it up with my hot air station and that is set to 500 degrees Celsius so it's really going to turn this to liquid very quickly. A lot of people ask why I don't invest in a glue gun. I have actually got one but they take forever to heat up and they take ages to cool down. Also I don't believe they get to the temperatures that this would get to and apparently when you get them up to higher temperatures this glue, it, the, bond is, the bond is stronger so I've been told. So for me it's a win-win. It's supposed to be a stronger bond and it's much quicker. I can get this glue to liquid within a few not seconds but you know within 30 seconds or something rather than having to wait five minutes for the glue gun to heat up. It's a little bit more messy, yes, 
but uh, I think if you started using a hot air station on these sticks I think you'd struggle to go back to the glue gun because it's just so quick and it works so well. Now it would be much safer if I was to epoxy the bottom of this back on because then it will probably be unlikely to come apart again while now you know with hot glue that it could heat up a little bit and it might come apart and you see there's mains going into here so somebody could get an electric shock. I'm not going to be giving this to anybody else. I The only people using this will be people in my household and they will know the limitations of this device. I feel happy to use this, but don't copy what you see in these videos and think it's safe. I would never give this away to anybody else and I would never sell it to anybody else because now this product is no longer safe to use. Problem is if I was to use epoxy on it, then it probably would be, I say probably, would be safe to use. But then you see I'm never gonna be able to get into it again. And I think a product like this will probably need maintenance every couple of years, or if water gets anywhere near the top, then I think it could rust up quite easy. You see here, it didn't take much to stop the motor. When the motor's going, it would take an awful lot to stop it. But I think when it's already stopped to start it up, I don't think it would take much to jam it up. So uh, yeah, that's the reason I'm using hot glue, but you put down in the comments what you would use. What would you use that would allow you to get into it again? Because with the hot glue, I can just use isopropyl alcohol, and then that will separate the bond between the glue and the plastic so it can be opened up again. But if you were to use epoxy, then as far as I'm concerned, it's glued forever. But let me know what you would use on it to kind of make it safe but yet serviceable again in the future. So obviously don't copy what you see in these videos. I'm using hot glue, but I really don't know if that's gonna be safe to use long term. All right, okay, so uh, yeah, it's on. I mean, I'd be happy using it, but I would never give this to anybody or sell this because it's just not, uh, it's just not safe, is it? You know, there's mains voltage going into the bottom of it. It's a real shame that uh, it wasn't just held together with four security screws, and that would be it then, job done. Just winding this back on. Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to uh, stop this from turning because, yeah, this is turning at the bottom there, so that's not going to wind up. So I should have put that on before <laughs> before I put the uh, the top on. Yeah, it's getting tight. Excellent. I'm just holding the screwdriver here. So that's what the slot's for, isn't it? It's for at the manufacturer to hold it while this is put on. Yeah, but it feels pretty tight now. So uh, let's see if that's going to be spinning. Here we go, let's see if it flies off. And apparently you're only supposed to use it for 20 seconds and let it cool for one minute. Well, it seems nice and smooth now. So the only thing I would personally use this for is with that DeLonghi coffee machine, the bean to cup that I fixed a while ago, basically you put your beans in the back of it, but there's uh, another bit at the front for, well, sorry, in the top for ground coffee. Now, let's say if you've just bought beans like I have, everybody in the household might like a particular type, but then if you want a different type, then I suppose you could turn this into ground coffee and then put it into the ground bit. So that's what I would personally use it for. So for example, I've got these Colombian coffee beans here that I haven't tried yet because you see it's full always of the other beans that's in there. So obviously the best thing would just to be buy this in instant. But you know, like in this case, I bought these when I, uh, when I bought the coffee machine. So uh, yeah. But I'm not sure if this is really what it's meant for. I think it's made more for, you know, when you're making your coffee with your filters and stuff like that. But let's just see if it does. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh, my word. Oh, my God. It smells of the cross between food and coffee. Oh, wow. I'm addicted. Right, let's see if it can... Grind this up. Here we go. Ready? Whoa. No way. Look how quick that works. What? Oh 
Wow, I wasn't expecting it to work that quickly. What? Oh my my, yeah. Obviously I'm unplugged. Might be still too coarse, I don't know. I'd give it a go though. Just take a random, here we go, random. Yeah. I wonder now, would that be as fine as what normal ground coffee is? Bear with me. Let's just some decaf here, and this is the ground stuff. I just want to see the comparison. No, it is more fine. But still a bit crunchy. It's definitely more fine. I wonder if I leave that on longer, will it become more fine, or is it just gonna stay as it is now, because it's just gonna kind of be passing through the blades? God, I've got it everywhere. Just keep it on a bit longer. Become any finer. Oh my my, it has. No way. It is now. Hold on. It's as fine as that. I, I would have thought it would have just kept going through the blades, you know, but no. Yeah, it really has gone to proper ground. Oh, brilliant. Okay, I'm going to make a nice uh, cup of coffee. Okay, so we have to put this all the way to here and we have to put it in this little chute at the top. So let's try to get a full cup full there we go put it in I'm amazed at how fine it does it it's like kiln dried sand it's that fine right I am gonna go for this one here so now it won't be grinding the beans at the back here Oh yes. Looking good. Got enough there for another cup or two. Here's my Colombian coffee with some frothed milk in it and it tastes mighty fine. Just like the Colombian grind here. Boom boom. But seriously, check out how fine it has been ground up. So there we have it, that's my attempt at repair on the Krups Coffee and Spice Grinder. I'm not happy with it, it didn't go well at all, which is a real shame. If only security screws had been used at the bottom, then it would have been able to be taken apart nicely and put together nicely and it would be safe to use. As it is now, it's not very safe, is it? So uh, yeah, a massive shame. In hindsight now, what I wish I'd done, and if you're watching this to try and to repair your own, I think it's kind of pot luck when you're taking these out about using heat and stuff. Too much heat, it all starts to melt. Not enough heat and they're gonna snap. So you might get lucky and you might be able to undo all four without any damage, but I think most people will have at least one that will break on them. I would have, if I could have my time again, concentrate on moving the motor from here without even taking it apart. So if I'd used a small screwdriver, but with a bigger handle on it, I would have had more torque, and I think I could have easily got this working without taking this apart, because all I had to do was give that a tiny little turn back and forth a few times, and it would have freed itself up. The screwdriver I was using was too thin. There wasn't enough grip, not enough torque to uh, to pull it round. So yeah, that's what I would do differently. So if you're trying to fix one of yours, maybe you could start by doing that, obviously when it's unplugged, to see if you can free it up. And then you don't have to worry about breaking any clips and it's gonna be a lot quicker as well. So uh, yeah, that is it. A product that works very well, but I don't think it's been designed with repair in mind. Still, that is the way it is. If you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Take care, everyone.